about you time. And yes, you have tuned in to yourself today. You are giving yourself an opportunity to do self-reflection, to kind of look at how you're feeling, how things are going, and what's going on. I tell you that today has been absolutely a wonderful day. And every day, I promise you, if you wake up in that day, it's a good day, even if it's bad stuff happening. So just let's be clear. So I wanted to talk to you tonight about emotional bank accounts. Sometimes we are unaware of how we're doing with others in relationship to their emotions. And so tonight we just want to just kind of dive in and let you know some things that could cause an emotional withdrawal and some things that can cause emotional deposits. So tonight it is all about you. I have some great news and if I'm a little excited and I look like I am just about to burst. So I am getting ready to start my own TV show and I got the tapings today and I'm so excited. Uh, April's going to be a great month. That's when they're going to start. I'll be giving you guys some more details, but oh my gosh, I am just so excited about the show. Uh, it is, it's all about you, but we're going to be talking about ignorance on fire. But yes, I just want to let you know that's up and coming. And like really soon, like in April, because we only have what, this week left? So yeah, so I'm excited about that. I wanted to also let you know, I'm just excited about the opportunities that's being created because people are now starting to look at themselves because they're starting to, or at least in this case, forced to be with themselves and others in their lives. So as your friendly neighborhood coach on the couch, <laughs> I think I'm going to change my name to coach on the couch, but your friendly neighborhood life coach just wanted to let you know that you are probably dealing with emotions right in your life right now. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about emotional bank accounts. So is anybody very good at balancing a checkbook? I wasn't always, so let me just be clear. Sharon wasn't always good at balancing a checkbook, coming up with a budget, or doing anything that is good for finances. But here are some things that I learned about an emotional bank account. First, you have to know that with every relationship you have, there is an emotional bank account present. That's the first thing to realize that in everybody that you deal with, they and you together have a joint emotional bank account. So in any bank account, you make deposits and you make withdrawals. So the thing that is really, really wonderful is that sometimes we don't know when we're making withdrawals and we don't know if we're making a deposit. So I just wanted to clarify a few of those things for you so that you'll kind of be better at balancing your emotional bank account. All right, so let's talk about the withdrawals first because you know, we have relationships that are not working. There's a reason why they're not working. We have been making withdrawals and probably making those withdrawals unconsciously. So let me give you some ideas of things that will make withdrawals from an emotional bank account with the relationships that you're in. Number one, when you assume that you understand how someone else is feeling, you don't ever want to assume anything, but people's actions and body language, it will tell you how they're feeling in, out of their mouth. So you got to pay attention to body language. Okay. Also, when you are unkind to people, rude, disrespectful, you're making some huge withdrawals. Now, if we want to relate it to money, these are some thousand dollar withdrawals. These are some big money with five thousand dollar withdrawals. And if that ain't big money to you, then a hundred thousand dollar withdrawals. Those are big withdrawals. <coughs> Assuming you understand maybe the five or ten dollar withdrawal, but nevertheless, it's a withdrawal. 
So what you want to make sure is when you're making decisions on how you treat people, that you decide on whether you want to make a deposit or make a withdrawal. Some other things that make withdrawals in your emotional relationships, in your bank account, are breaking promises. How do you feel when someone breaks a promise to you? It makes you feel awful because there was an expectation. There was a promise made. And when someone breaks that promise, it creates distrust. Breaking a promise is a huge withdrawal out of your emotional bank account. Oh my goodness, you can, you can almost destroy a relationship and close an account. <laughs> close an emotional bank account, if you will, when you break promises. Another big withdrawal is being disloyal. Yeah. When you're disloyal or you badmouth your person you're in relationship with behind their back, that is definitely an emotional withdrawal. Also, an emotional withdrawal could be when you create unrealistic expectations of others and don't tell them about your expectations. Those things tend to create or cause withdrawals in your relationships. Uh, also, making sure that um, keep pride a little bit at bay because if you're pride in your pride and you have a lot of pride and you're arrogant, those can make some really, really um, significant withdrawals as well. Because when you act like you know everything and you're arrogant about it and act like don't nobody know anything but you, and you don't take another person's ideas in, the, in that arena too. Also, um, when you don't give feedback, in other words, when somebody's saying, how did I do? Or how am I doing? And you're like, okay. But that's not giving them really a lot of feedback. And so you can make some emotional withdrawals with just not uh, telling people how they impact your life, not sharing with them what type of contribution that they're making in your life and taking them for granted. Uh, we do that a lot with our children as well as our you know, spouses and our friends and people who are very close to us. We do that. So uh, just make sure you try to do less of that. Uh, please and thank you go a long way, guys. I promise you. Also, uh, holding grudges. When you hold grudges, that can also make a withdrawal. So these are just a few things that, that kind of impact relationships. And sometimes we do it based on our own emotions and what's going on, but we're not taking into account that if we make a withdrawal, if we want to restore balance to the account, we also have to make deposits. So let's talk about deposits. Um, if you seek first to understand before being understood, that's an emotional deposit because people are gonna be in your space because they know, wow, they're not just self-centered. You're not self-centered, you're not selfish. You're actually saying, you know what? If I was in your shoes, I would actually be feeling the same way. People love empathy. They love that. And you're able to connect with people in such a way and be related when you actually do seek to understand their side. Showing kindness is just so, uh, it's so easy to do. It's free and it just takes a willingness to do so. But that's one of the emotional bank accounts that can make huge deposits, just being kind. I can't tell you how many environments I go in and when I walk in the room and I go around and I speak to people, talk with them and share my absolute genuine unconditional love for them, they say, Sharon, you just, you know, you make a difference for me whenever I get in your space. And that's because I am genuinely kind to them. I'm courteous to them. I show them respect, the same respect, kindness and courteousness I would receive, want to receive. Um, keeping promises. Now, I'll be honest with you. I learned from some very, 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 very wise coaches that holding your integrity with yourself is just so important. And being a woman of my word has so much importance, not only to others, but to myself. 
And when I make a promise, I really don't just make frivolous promises anymore. I used to just promise anything. Girl, I'll call you back. Mm -mm. Don't call nobody. Or, oh, girl, you know I'm coming to that party. If you invited me, girl, I'll be there. Don't go. Mm -mm. Don't even be there. I had no intentions of being there when it fell out my mouth. So a lot of times, we got to get better at only making promises that has a high percentage that we actually are going to fulfill on that promise. Do not make promises that you know you cannot fulfill. Also, being loyal, you know, to people who are absent or if they're not in your space. Some people are loyal to you long as they're with you. Long as you can see them, they're loyal to you. And as soon as they get out of your sight, well, it's free pickings for everybody, as they say in my grandma's country. So you just have to make sure you're loyal even when that person is absent. Set clear expectations with people who are around you. And, and expectations don't have to sound like orders, okay? Expectations need to sound like here are some things uh, that I do expect and I'm hoping that you're willing to, you know, fulfill on that expectation. And if you're not, please let's have a conversation to at least find out why you're not willing to be uh, or to do what it is expected of you to do, especially when you're in a job. They always give you their job duties and what's expected of you. Uh, you can lose a job quick when you don't meet their expectations. So, but be willing to set clear expectations in all your relationships. Don't be afraid to apologize. Oh my God, apologies are awesome emotional deposits because it allows an individual who may have been hurt by you to understand that, wow, you do care, you didn't mean to hurt them, and you actually really are sorry for having that impact. So I'm telling you, always give feedback and let people know how they're doing in your life, uh, one good or bad, but there is a loving way to do that. Most of the time we can let people know when they're doing something wrong. <laughs> but when they're doing something right, we don't say a thing. Matter of fact, we just go around like everything's lovely. And we need to also acknowledge when a person is doing wonderful things in our lives. Um, be willing to forgive. That is probably a $100,000 deposit in relationship bank accounts. Being willing to forgive. You'd be surprised on how so many people, if they would just understand the power of forgiveness, if they would just understand the power of just saying, you know what, I'm going to let this go and I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to nail you to the cross. I'm not going to hold a grudge. I'm not going to hold any more anger. I'm not going to uh, choose to be a certain way with you that takes me out of my comfort comfortable way of being. So I just wanted to share some, just some little tidbits on an emotional bank account with you tonight and just let you know that if your relationships are not of your liking right now, please make sure you check your bank account, look at your withdrawals and see if you need to make some deposits. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. You guys know I don't ever keep you long. I'll give you wonderful information about the TV show. But just make sure, um, we'll just cover them real quick, but just make sure, be cognitive that people that are close to you do matter. They do. Your children do matter. Your parents' children do matter. And I'm talking to some 50 year old children that probably hadn't called parents and checked on them because there's some grudges and some old relationships that have been so old. You just don't even know how to call. Just make a call. You'd be surprised what it'll do. Just make a call and restore some of your relationships. And I would love to hear from you. So please inbox me. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know how I can contribute to your life. I am your friendly neighborhood life coach. This is It's All About You. And I just want to thank you so very much for tuning in Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. Always. I'll be here for you. Have a
have a great night.